Recently, I attempted to reflow a circuit board, and it was basically to put a circuit board with LEDs into a picture frame so you could run it off a USB power supply and have your choice of colours or colour changing or flickering or flashing, whatever you want LEDs. And the reflow went disastrous, disastrously wrong because I attempted to pre-tin the pads with solder, add some flux, sit the uh, the resistors on top and then reflow it. And it, it just didn't work because the flux all evaporated off before it was needed. So I'm going to have another go. And this time I got some circuit boards made. I got these ones made by JLC PCB, not a sponsor. But I have to say I ordered these on the 14th of May and they arrived on the 20th of May. That was one of the fastest I've ever had a circuit board uh, manufactured. So this time I've got the advantage that the if I zoom down on this, you'll see that I've got the solder resist around the surface mount pads. So the resistors aren't going to go wonky all over the place like they did last time. And uh, this should just make it a lot easier. So to solder this, I have decided to experiment again with the solder paste, but I've diluted it down now. I diluted the solder paste with flux so I could apply it easily. And uh, when I've been applying it, if I just... Uh, can I bring something up here to show you this? One moment. Terrible choice of background colour, but that's okay. So what I've done here, I've diluted the paste to a level that I can actually put a bit of pressure on this and then just put a tiny little drop on each pad. And the downside of diluting it is that when I heat it up on the hot plate, and I know this will happen because I have been experimenting, it initially boils off the flux and that tends to dry out the solder and then it cracks and it pings everywhere but enough remains in position to do the job but by doing it this way I've found that I can get a decent controlled portion onto each pad so I'm going to do that with all these pads now and then I'm going to be back in a moment to place the resistors the solder paste has been applied. My contingency plan was just to use the flux and standard solder and just manually solder these, but I'm going to give this another go and we'll see how it goes. So I've got 220 ohm resistors and I'm going to start placing them on the pads here, making sure that tips of the uh, tweezers don't get too sticky in the process, which they will. I'll get them roughly in place. Theoretically, they're going to pull themselves into position once I flow this on a hot plate, which I'll be doing. Let's try and get them even roughly in position, though. That'd be quite good. Um, I will probably end up building one of these manually as well, just to compare the two techniques. I have to say that putting the solder paste on is extremely messy. I have never, ever had quite so much lead on my hands in my life compared to traditional soldering. It's very messy. Uh, paper tissue is required all round. Far too much uh, solder on that pad, but that's okay. And I've just scattered some of the resistors over the side right. Tell you what. I shall pause, since I'm just scattering resistors everywhere now, I shall pause and put these on, and the next scene will be them reflowing and hopefully lining up properly. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, I've got the resistors on. The hot plate is not on yet. I'm about to turn it on, and I'll let it heat up, and then I'm going to place the circuit board onto the hot plates. I'll be back in a moment once that's up to heat. And in this instance, I'll be heating it up to, let me check, it's 280 degrees Celsius. So I'll be back in a moment once that's already up to heat. It's up to temperature. I'm about to place it on right now. Avoiding putting my fingers on it because that is very, very hot. Let's observe what happens here. Um, I'm seeing a bit of haze coming off. I'm seeing... The solder pinging out. Did you see that wee bit just ping out there? That's quite annoying. Um, it, yeah, it's going very crusty, but the solder is beginning to flow. Some components are flowing. And they do appear to be going into position when they do flow. This, the solder is, because I've added more liquid flux to it, it is pinging. But having said that, once it's pinged, although it's forming little balls elsewhere in the circuit board, the main thing is that it does appear to be reflowing. And the components seem to be more or less going into position. I say more or less going into position because that one hasn't gone into position. Let's nudge it. Maybe it's pinged too much with solder away. Um. So how many more need to flow? I notice that the circuit boards are just uh, curved up at the end, so they'll take a wee bit longer to heat at the outside. 
Yeah, they're taking quite a bit longer to heat it outside. And uh, the all the middle ones have more or less gone now. This one's just sticking up, but I don't think it's fully reflowed. That one has just reflowed. That is looking pretty good so far. The corner one is the last one over there to reflow. These ones are starting to reflow in the middle. It's the ones in the corners that have not reflowed too fast, but now they are reflowing. They've reflowed. The whole circuit board has now reflowed. So before it burns, I shall lift it off and place it on a cooling surface. And uh, then we can examine and see what's happened. Well, I have to say that wasn't too bad. There was one, it wasn't perfect. There was one resistor that had a bad connection at one end, but it was easy to just add a touch of flux and reflow it. So now I'm sticking in the LEDs and again, and I'm making a bit of a habit of this, I'm choosing the slow color changing RGB ones because I really like them. Things worthy of note about this circuit board. It's single sided. Um, I deliberately chose one millimeter holes for the LEDs pins, which is actually a bit big, but I found that with some LEDs, there's a slight meniscus of resin around the lead that can actually make them quite hard to sit flat. Not that you're really supposed to sit LEDs hard against a circuit board. Uh, the idea there being that uh, thermal expansion contraction, particularly during soldering of the leads can actually stress the leads a little bit. Uh, in this case, uh, I've never really had a problem with that, so I'm just going to do it as it is. A single-sided board, I didn't put the solder resistor on this side, largely because if you choose a single-sided board with a GLC, uh, they don't offer the option of, I think you'd have to choose the double-sided option to have this resist on both sides. One of the other manufacturers does have a little checkbox that allows you to choose that the other side gets covered in the resist as well, because I think it makes it actually quite nice. Um, other things were they of note. Um, although these LED layouts, I, this is my standard layout for an LED that I use, the flat denotes the flat in the package. So all the anodes effectively go to the top, where on the back of the circuit board it says bigclav.com. Um, but these wouldn't be seen in normally because I designed this circuit board to be painted in the colour of your choice, so to speak. I may I'll, I'll make a few of these and see how well they go together. If they go well together, then I may make them available on my shop or I may give some away to patrons to test as well. I probably will give some away to patrons and PayPal supporters just as a thank you for their contribution to the channel. Um, we'll see later on. I've got some other ideas there. Looking for that flat. You can look through this package and you can see the anvil versus a little electrode at the side, but with the milky packages, it just makes that a little bit harder. Uh, other things worth a note about this circuit board, yeah, I, part of the reason I chose single side is because uh, I don't like plated through holes for this, because it makes it much easier to change an LED if it's just a purely single-sided board. There's a lot to be said for single-sided board, so single board designs. Um, another thing, they give the option of removing the code. You see a little bit of uh, text down here. When this gets put into a picture frame, that is visible. Having said that, it doesn't really matter. It's That's their reference number during manufacturing. You can pay a little extra and uh, remove that code. And it just means they have to manually track it through the uh, printed circuit board processing. But um, if the circuit board gets painted, I used to paint them matte black or metallic colours when I made these a long time ago, then that would just cover everything anyway. And you'd see the slight outline of these LED packages. You'd see it through the uh, through the paint as a sort of physical ridge. This is designed to run off a USB power supply. It's got these 220 ohm resistors. You could choose whatever resistors you wanted. I chose 220 ohm as being a nice balance between uh, USB load and also uh, intensity, because to be honest, you don't want a display that is to be too bright if it's indoors. You want something subtle in the background that doesn't command your attention. Maybe I should get some of those strobing, flashing LEDs and make one. That could be quite interesting, just a novelty. But I shall continue putting these LEDs in and putting them into this frame. Now, this frame is the uh, Velleman frame. A few of you have asked about it in the past. I don't know if this is still available. It's made of sort of modular bolt together sort of factory metalwork. And I think this one came from 
Maplin, possibly, a long time ago, but we're talking decades ago that I bought this frame. You clip the circuit board in and then it holds it up while you put the components in and then you can hook on the lid and the lid has foam that then presses the components down so when you latch it with these latches at the end you can then uh, turn it over and uh, solder the components in complete comfort without them dropping out the circuit board unexpectedly. So I shall, um, I shall pause momentarily while I put the rest of these LEDs in and then we'll... Uh, take a look at the lid going on, me flipping it over, solder some, then I'll pause again, then show you the finished result. So um, I shall pause now. The LEDs are all in place. Here comes the lid with its spongy foam interior. It just clips on at the back. I've shown this before, but I'll show it again for those who haven't seen it. It hinges down. The little baggage ca catches come up at the side. Super bright because it is aluminum, aluminium. Then you flip it over and the handle actually props up at a nice angle to actually work on so you can just solder straight in. One, I'm soldering. I normally solder just one lead at a time. The reason for that is to allow uh, the LEDs to be checked to make sure they're straight. Now I have used the one millimeter holes in this. I've also ordered another circuit board with 0.8 millimeter holes because I want to do a good test between them. I could have just drilled some and DIY circuit boards, but you know, if getting circuit boards made, I might as well do it. The one millimeter has one slight drawback, and that is that uh, sometimes the solder doesn't wick right round it if it's too wide. But it has other advantages. It takes a bit of stress off the lead. It takes a bit of stress off alignment. I think there's an advantage to it, but others, others mileage might vary. Normally, I'd use the one millimeter holes for things like. Uh, wrecked fire diode leads that are quite thick because otherwise they can be quite tight to get through um, the standard 0.8 millimeter hole that I'd use for resistors and things like that. But anyway, I shall continue soldering these and once they're soldered, uh, I'll come back and we can take a look at what it looks like. I'll just stick the lead in the back and stick it into the picture frame and the whole thing will be complete and will be cosmic in its glory. So I shall pause while I do this. That's all the LEDs soldered in. I only needed to remove one and turn it round and put it in the correct way. That's quite good going, particularly when they're so sort of milky you can't really see through them. <clears throat> it's also worth mentioning that because there's a resistor in series that each LED, normally if you stick one of these uh, colour changing LEDs the wrong way around in a, a high current supply, low voltage high current, uh, it pops it because there's a diode inside and the protection diode in the chip and it often goes short circuit and kills the LED. Uh, so the resistor saves it from that. I've pre-prepared the back of my picture frame here. I've got uh, the USB lead threaded through it, a rather cheap one. I think this one came from one below in the UK. It's not up to Poundland's qualities. Uh, I'm going to solder this on. I have already stripped it and checked the polarity, so I'm soldering the red onto the positive because it is actually positive, which is nice, and the black onto the negative. There are just a couple of solder pads in the back. At the original design, I put loads of different positions that you could connect and then decided that just introduces confusion. Strain relief is simply the fact that this is held at the back and then it's sort of bent tightly through the actual uh, the wooden panel at the back. So let's slide that wooden panel down right now onto that. And sit it up like this. Place it into the frame, fold the tabs down to grip it in place, and then power it up and we'll see how it looks. So this is my classic favourite effect, it's the colour morphing. So uh, I'm going to plug it in, uh, let's just plug it in and check, yep we do have all red LEDs. Let's turn the solder iron off for a piece, uh, let's take the exposure off, let's make it dark. Let's make sure I'm focused down onto that. Um, what's the best way to do this here? Oh, that is quite dark. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Let's lock that off so it doesn't go bananas. Uh, zoom up just a little tad. And I'll plug it in. And we can watch it gradually morph. So these are the self-colour changing LEDs and each one does its own thing. That is quite ferocious. I'm just going to tame that down a little bit. 
But the nice thing about these is that they do drift. Interestingly, it's making the back, particularly the blue there, actually made the back green. Uh, the circuit board panel flew rest slightly. That's interesting. And these will just gradually drift out of sync and change colour. It's a really nice effect. And I like the fact uh, that I've done this before with my 5x7 uh, dot matrix uh, display panels. But now that I've got uh, a 6x9, which is 54 LEDs, the bigger you make these, the more interesting they are. Someone else was mentioning that they did sort of designer art based on these, but they actually sequenced the turning on of them and swept it down in a, in a wave so that all then everything sort of followed the gradual colour shift before it went completely random would then sort of gradually follow that wave down. But it's a nice effect. I'm going to leave the camera, I'm going to leave it running for a while, but I'm going to pause the camera and then I'll return and uh, you can see the effect with its true randomness. You know what, I might actually just turn on its side and zoom in. Look at that effect, that is so lovely. It's so pleasing and so simple because every LED is just doing its own thing. Okay, I'm going to pause and I'm going to let it totally random up and then I'll be back shortly. That's reasonably random now. It's a very slow effect, so you'd gradually just see colours morphing about. I have to say, one thing I'd like to see with these colour changing LEDs is instead of them using the red, green, blue chips, it would be good to see them use red, yellow and blue because that would uh, still give green when the blue and yellow illuminated. But it would give a bias away from the colder end of the spectrum into the sort of warmer yellows and greens um, and oranges end of the spectrum as opposed to being dominated by quite harsh colours. But there we go. It's a nice visual effect. It just sits in the background and does its own thing. And any time you look at it, it's a different pattern. It's, uh, it's very pleasing. Um, so I shall, um, I'm going to try and put together some kits, I think. That's the best bet. And I'll send some of these out and we'll get some people to try them out for the soldering and see if the circuit board design is uh, good enough yet. It's sort of optimised for easy soldering. There's a temptation there is also to make a through-hole uh, resistor version just because that's uh, going to be a lot easier than the surface mount if you're not used to surface mount components. But I'll also probably build one of these uh, just by manually soldering it together with a soldering iron just to see how well it solders in that style. But yeah, it's a nice effect. It's a really nice circuit board, well worth putting together and sort of having as an ornament. <laughs> 